Hey everybody, I've got the window open. I hope this truck next to me is not too loud. I can hear a turbo whistling. Um, just wanted to make a quick little video before I went to bed um, about this goddamn hurricane. <laughs> uh, I am, I'm in Utah, I'm many states away from where all this is happening, uh, and I've just been, I've been listening to what's going on in the news, and, you know, looking at people posting pictures on their Facebook feeds, uh, to keep up with what's going on with people I know, and also I've been talking to friends and family, I've been talking to everybody on the phone, just checking in to see how, what's going on with everybody because the situation in Houston kind of seems it's it's it changes rapidly you know it's uh, there's neighborhoods that that never flood like my mom's neighborhood that never ever flood are flooding <laughs> you know and it's the the water level will go down in an area and go up in another and vice versa I guess as the water finds somewhere to go I, I don't know it's just it, where, wherever it's raining, wherever it's not, where it, it rains over here, it drains over there. So, you know, I uh, talked to some of my friends and I talked to my mom this morning and uh, my, uh, my mom's neighborhood is flooding. She doesn't have water in her house yet, but uh, the water's been uh, creeping up her front yard all day. So, and she's, she's not sure right now if the water is going to enter the house or not. So she's having a rough time with that. Um, <laughs> uh, it might be okay though. You know, if the water level kind of stays where it's at, doesn't get any higher, then it might be fine. Um, a couple friends of mine have lost their cars. I most likely have already lost my car, and <laughs> one of them anyway. I've got a car in Houston, and I, uh, I've got an F-250 that stays at the yard in Wisconsin. My, uh, my car stays in a storage unit, which is about 100 yards from one of the creeks on the northwest side of town. Uh, so I, I was kind of thinking that maybe I'd get a few inches of water in there, which is okay. That's what I initially was thinking. I was thinking, you know what? Uh, get a, get six inches of water, everything will be fine. And then I was thinking, you know what? Maybe if it gets over six inches, gets up to a foot, it's going to flood the interior of the car, but that's okay. You know, I, I can I could dry that out I, if i got to replace the carpet, but... At this point, I'm thinking my entire storage unit may be completely underwater. So what that what that means is my car will be gone, my Mustang, uh, maybe two or three thousand dollars worth of tools, power tools, automotive tools, uh, yard equipment, stuff like that. All that shit, it may be gone. Yeah, uh, I, I have insurance coverage on the unit, but it's not going to cover the goddamn seven, eight thousand dollars worth of stuff that's in there. I mean, the car alone is worth about three grand, you know, and I've put maybe fifteen hundred into it in uh, in parts and done all of, most of the labor myself. You know, I'm not going to get the. I'm thinking, it, I'm thinking that unit's probably flooded, and I think I'm going to lose the car. And I think if I invoke my insurance. It'll be enough for me to, it'll cover the cost of what I originally paid for the car, and that's about it. Um, my hand tools, I'm going home in about two weeks, and I'm, you know, I can really assess things. I think my hand tools, I, <laughs> I expect to get there, and I think all of my, my drawers with all of my automotive tools are going to have water in them. And uh, I think a lot of my automotive tools are going to have been soaking in water for a couple of weeks. So maybe I could, maybe the water doesn't get that high, but maybe if it does, I can just pull them out and dry everything out, coat everything in grease or something like that. 
I've just got so much money and fucking tools there, and you know, I feel bad for my mom because she's, you know, she's put they put money into that house. Just they, they they just put new carpet in, like a couple of months ago, um, and so that you know that's at risk. Gutters gutters have fallen off the house, and you know the roof's been damaged and stuff like that. A buddy of mine lost his car already. It's been flooded, so I, it, it's. It, it sucks just, you know, because I keep thinking about my stuff and storage and then I, I have a second storage unit that I share with my sister that has all my furniture and clothes and things that I ha actually live with when I have somewhere to live when I'm not staying in the truck. You know, my couch and, you know, my, my mattresses and everything. Uh, I don't know. Nobody knows if, if that unit's been flooded. Nobody, I, I don't even, I can't find out if that area's been flooded because no one can fucking get anywhere. <laughs> no, all of the roads are impassable, you know, which it, that's one thing that bothers me is I just don't know what's happening with my stuff, you know. You could say, well, man, it's just stuff and that's what insurance is for. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. And that's what I keep trying to remind myself. But at the same time, I've had a lot of this shit for a long time. A lot, you know, I've got furniture that were like fucking gifts from, you know, people. Gifts from my mom and stuff like that. Like hardwood furniture, you know, like, like I've got like a three or four thousand dollar mattress that I've only had for a couple of years, you know, and that was a fucking gift, you know, and it, like my couch, I've had my couch since I moved in my first apartment eight, nine years ago, you know, I, I don't want to buy a new couch, I don't want to have to replace my car or any of my tools. You know, I mean, I've got power tools, i got drills, and all my electrical tools that I, that I have. That all that shit might be destroyed, I don't know. It's, it's fucking, it, it, that's, that's stressful, and another part that's stressful is I can't fucking do anything! <laughs> I'm like 2,000 miles away, or 1,500 miles away, and, you know, I could be there in two days, but it wouldn't make a fucking difference anyway, because I can't get into the city. I can't get in, and even if I could get in, I can't get out. You know, and worse comes to worse, even if I did show up and could get in, then I'm putting my truck at risk of, of getting flooded, you know? So, you know, that, that's, that's what I want to do. <laughs> I want to fucking tell them, I want to just tell, tell dispatch, like, look, I'm deadheading home, you know, because I know there ain't no freight going down there. You know, just hold me off for the next week or two. But, you know, there's no point in me. I Because I just want to go down there. I, I at least want to try to fucking help in some sort of way. Just do something. You know, try to just find out maybe the status of my stuff. But I can't do any of that. You know, the whole fucking city is just shut down. No one can go anywhere. You know, no one's, no one's going to work. <laughs> Nothing's fucking open. Like, almost nothing. There's, there's, there's... There's little pockets where the water's not that high of gas stations and stores here and there that are still open. But most people can't get to them unless you live down the street and you can walk to it. Because you really can't drive a car. <sighs> so that's stressful. You know, and I keep listening to the news about what's going on. And, you know, I keep, you know, then I'm like, ah, shit, I don't want to hear about it anymore. So I'll listen to something else. But then I'm like... Ah, oh, fuck, I want to hear about it again. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just I'm worried about, you know, how, with how things are going, you know. I mean, a friend of mine and her dogs had to be rescued by a boat the other night. You know? Uh, I just, I keep thinking if I was there, I could fucking, I could help people in some sort of way. There's something I could do to help. You know, even if it's just people, you know that I know, or people that live nearby, my mom's house, whatever, I don't know, I just feel like there's, <laughs> I could, I could be of so much more assistance if I wasn't 1,500 miles away in Utah, on my way to, uh, to Los Angeles, <laughs> so I'm headed even further away, but, that's yeah, just, I just wanted to put out my two cents, I'm gonna light another cigarette before I go to bed. <clears throat> this topic's got me a little stressed. A little bit stressed. I'm not a very stressed out guy most of the time. You know? I'm trying not to let this shit bother me. 
you know, I, I had trouble sleeping last night because I kept thinking <sighs> I could have, I should have had uh, somebody, I should have had one of my friends go to my storage unit and pull my car out and get my car out of there. I should have known that I should have known that that area is flown to, is, uh, is prone to flooding. You know, and I know that it's it's real close to a creek, and I just figured it's not gonna be that bad. But it is that fucking bad. It's really bad. You know, and I don't... <sighs> you know... Houston, you know, Texans are resilient. You know, when Hurricane Ike came through, it fucked a lot of stuff up. But we came back from it. You know, we've had floods before. Like, Tropical Storm Allison back when I was a kid and I moved to Texas. It flooded a lot of shit. Downtown flooded. And it caused... It fucked a lot of things up, but... You know, we got back to life as normal. You know, we had a, a flood maybe two years ago. I think it was a Memorial Day flood or something like that. You know, uh, it was like estimated that about like something like eight or ten thousand cars were lost in the city. You know, but we came back from that too. But this, I just, we'll come back from this too. I, I just, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be this monumental undertaking. You know, because even. Say your car, your house survives, but maybe your car doesn't. You know, there's going to be no rental cars to be had for people to get to work once the water recedes. People, I mark my words. As soon as this, all this water's gone and people start being able to move around, every rental car in the city of Dallas will be rented out. I guarantee. It's Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, every car on the eastern half of Texas will have every rental car will be rented out. You know, and even if people are able to get cars, you know, the, a lot of a lot of their places of work are going to be flooded out. You know, and even if their places of work aren't flooded out, they're not they're like a lot of their customers. You know, they're going to lose a lot of patronage just because the customers are busy dealing with their own crises, crises, I guess rather. You know, it's just a lot of shit's just fucked up. You know, I just don't know how. I don't, I don't really know how things are going to get back to normal. I just, very slowly, I guess, you know. This is going to, I remember, I think Katrina, like when Katrina hit New Orleans, it took several weeks, if not months, for things to really get back to some kind of normalcy. Just with all the people that are displaced, houses and businesses and cars that are gone, just, you know, shit like that, damage to infrastructure. I just, you know, so much is going to have to be rebuilt. People's, you know, not just talking about people's cars and houses, but places of business, places where people work. You know, that's what I'm saying. You know, even if you're lucky enough to have your car and your house survive, your apartment, you may not have a place to work at when the water goes down. It may be completely destroyed. You might have to find another place to work or something. I don't know. I don't know. But it bothers me to be this far from home. Because I'm a big fan of my city. I'm a big fan of my state. And it sucks being this far from it when something like this is happening. I wish I could be there, you know. But, you know, when I talk to my, my family and I talk to my mom. Or I talk to my friends and my family. Uh... I tell them this, I say, you know, fuck, I wish I could be there. And they all tell me the same thing. Look, man, if you were here, there's not a whole lot you could do if you were. So, I don't know. I, uh, I, I, I about two weeks, I've been, I've been out here for at least three months. And so, I'm ready to go home and take a week off. So, in two weeks, you know, I'll go in and, you know, maybe next, probably next week when the, the, the floodwaters go down. And everything drains out. I'm gonna have somebody go over to my storage unit and find out if my uh, my car looks like a goddamn fishbowl. I just have to go from there, you know. You can't you can't get the kind of coverage on a storage unit to cover everything that's in there. I've tried. It's hard to cover a storage unit. You know, it's hard to get adequate coverage on a storage unit. You basically gotta get a renter's policy, and they don't. They don't cover that much in storage units, you know. 
so ah, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. I mean, uh, I I can't complain too much because I even though I may lose this car, probably already have. I still have a pickup truck. I haven't lost my only mode of transportation. I've still got my pickup truck parked in Marshfield on the yard. So yeah, I just want, I want to go straight back to Marshfield, grab my truck, and go straight back to Houston because it's high up. So you know, I feel like maybe I could help out with something but yeah it's just about all I got to say about that um, if you would like to help I and I would encourage you guys to if you can um, is uh, an organization called the Samaritan's Purse or Samaritan's Purse and you can go to their website SamaritanPurse.org and then go to Hurricane Harvey you could donate money to them or just American Red Cross or something you know it helps you know it's it's gonna help there's a lot of people that are in really bad situations right now there's people that are getting rescued by boats off the off the top of their houses there's people stranded in their attics I've been reading all kinds of you know reports on Facebook people going on Facebook to say you know go you know I have a friend I have a family member stranded here in this attic with kids at this address, somebody please help. Stuff like that. There's people right now that are stranded. They need help. And once those people get rescued, then they're just they're out of the water, but they're you know not out of the woods. You know, basically, these people are getting away from their flooded houses and stuff, but then they have nowhere to sleep. They got nothing to eat. You know, a lot of these recovery efforts have not been mounted yet because it's. The water's still too high for for like governmental organizations and shit to help. For FEMA to come in and Red Cross to come in, they just they can't access anybody. They can't access anything. They can't set anything up. They've just got to wait. So, if you'd like to help, you know, American Red Cross, stuff like that, you know, give a few dollars just to help out. Uh, but that's that's all I gotta say. You know, I I think once I get back and I actually get to take a look at everything, I'll probably I'll probably make a video showing it. <laughs> I don't know. There's a possibility maybe this storage unit isn't flooded. There's a possibility, a slim fucking possibility, but it's a possibility. But if every you know, a bunch of my shit gets destroyed, then maybe I'll make a video so you guys can actually see from my perspective. You know. What uh, what the aftermath of this fucking storm looks like. But other than that, uh, I'll talk to you guys later.